I'm Leo Walder for Kick Guru. This motherboard is the Gigabyte Z490i Aorus Ultra. The i for Mini ITX differentiates this board from the regular ATX Aorus Ultra. It supports LJ1200 with the Z490 chipset, just as the name suggests, which means that yes, indeed, it supports the Core i9-10900K. It's got two DDR4 slots rather than four. It has a single PCI Express graphics slot. It's got a pair of M.2s. So it's tiny, but it has a decent number of features, but you have to get closer to see some of the really neat bells and whistles. Here's the board, I.O. panel, we've got an M.2 under there, one graphics slot, CPU socket obviously, VRM coolers here, two memory slots, main power, 8-pin EPS, 4 SATA, USB 3, USB 3 Type-C, and there we have a funny little thing next to the front panel headers. That connector there, and these connectors here, are used with these proprietary cables. So we plug that in there. And we now have two headers for USB 2, so those can control up to four ports. At the top of the board, we now have three PWM connectors in addition to that connector there. So we have support for four PWM fans, quite impressive. And we have a few other headers and connectors there for things like audio. So despite its tiny size, this is a fully featured board. You don't, however, on the board have any micro buttons or a postcode or anything like that. The I.O. panel shows the different use case for Mini ITX. So in the middle, we've got DisplayPort and HDMI rather than just HDMI. We've got a lot of USBs. So we've got two old school USB 2s, four USB 3.2 Gen 1s, two 3.2 Gen 2s, one of which is Type-C, Intel 2.5 gigabit, and Wi-Fi 6. Other accessories before I progress, we've got an M.2 screw there, Wi-Fi antenna there, a couple of SATA cables, and that is an RGB cable. That connector there is addressable or digital RGB, and that connector is regular 12 volt RGB. Under this cosmetic block of metal with the Aorus logo, we have an M.2 shield, dead straightforward. On the back of the board, we have another M.2 there. We also have a back plate. We've got thermal pads contacting the back of the VRMs. A fairly substantial heatsink assembly that goes from the chipset around the VRMs. Has a decent amount of surface area. In terms of bulk, however, perhaps a little lacking. Here we have the chipset and then we have the VRMs and they are something to behold. The controller is an ISL69269. The vCore VRMs, eight phases, each rated at 90 amps. They are ISL99390s. And of course, we've got power that manages the uh, system itself and the IGP because we have graphics output. The hardware scores highly on the buildzoid scale as they are tantalum polymer capacitors. He likes them a lot. They cost, we are told, a fortune and every single last one of them is proper hardware. So that puts the price of this board 265 pounds in context. Yes, it's expensive. However, Gigabyte is serving up quite a lot for your money. To assemble our test system, we take a Core i9-10900K. WD Blue SSD. Secure this slightly fiddly little bolt type thing. Thirty two gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance LPX thirty six hundred.
and the mounting system for Fractal Design Celsius S36 all in one, which is obviously very similar to every other Ace Tech cooler on the market. Clearance inside the VRM SSD cooler, relatively tight, but it's all quite doable. We're gonna need the fan headers. Streacom test bench with Seasonic Prime Platinum 1300 watt power supply attached. Depending on your point of view, that is either too much or too little. I would generally install the Celsius with the pump cable going down south. However, you will see that it completely fouls the M.2 cover. So rotate it 90 degrees. and it's up against the memory, but it should be okay. And you can see that's close for comfort. Even so, a few more mil would be welcome, but such is life. We connect the pump to that header there. Stand up the cooler, connect the three Noctua Chromax fans to these three headers here. And then we install our Gigabyte RTX 2080 Super Graphics Card. All ready for action. We start up the test PC, load optimized defaults, which quietens it down nicely because I've been running in manual mode. Within Windows, I run the Shimino tool and we see that we have what I previously described as the full Taiwanese experience. In other words, we're running on settings that are similar to that MSI Meg Z490 Ace. Nothing unexpected here. On the desktop, we see the CPU package power is reported as 16, 18 watts in HW info on the desktop. It flips up to 40 and then back down all the way to five. So less than 20 watts, and we're ready to run Cinebench R20. Let us move up to the clock speed, and we're expecting this to be 4.9 all cores. Which it is. Power draw at the wall socket, 300. CPU power draw, 212, 213 and we see whether we maintain 300 at the wall socket through the entire test. Which we do, and the score, 6255. Bearing in mind I'm running OBS, that's going to have a little bit of an overhead. We're about 100 marks short of my actual benchmark score. After an initial test run of Cinebench on auto, we can see the Gigabyte is drawing the same amount of power as the ASUS ROG Maximus 12 Hero and slightly more than the MSI Meg Z490 Ace.
We're in the BIOS, we're in advanced mode, gonna do a simple overclock. V core to fixed 1.35. AVX offset zero. CPU clock ratio 51 for 5.1 gigahertz, of course. Ring ratio 47. And advanced voltage settings tucked all the way down there. And then into CPU VRM and load line calibration. And we're gonna try it on turbo. We might need to go to extreme. Cinebench again. And now we see power at the socket. 370 watts power for the CPU package, 260. Clock speed 5.1 gigahertz all cores, 1.375 vid. V core 1.37. 6559 is the score back in the BIOS and let us change the multiplier to 52 times. So 5.2 gigahertz, no other changes, still 1.35 V core. 5.2 gigahertz all calls, vid has now gone up to 1.4, 1.45 volts, depending on which core you're looking at. Let us run Cinebench. Behold, system power draw 375 or so watts. Package power, just about 300 watts. Package temp is 82 degrees. Vid looks absolutely horrendous. We're hanging on to 5.2 gig all cores and we have a score of 6714. Let's run Cinebench again. We're seeing vCore 1.37 volts, which is pretty much exactly what it was at 5.1 gigahertz, but we're seeing vid at 1.56, which is much higher. System power draw 380 watts, whereas before it was 360, 20 odd higher, which we can easily believe. However, package power is being reported by HW Info as much higher. And the reason for that disparity is in HW Info is that CPU package power is based on vid rather than vCore. In this instance, it looks to me like vid is completely out to lunch. Things are looking slightly complicated. On auto, the Gigabyte draws more power than both the MSI and the ASUS. When we overclock to 5.1 gigahertz, the gigabyte draws more power than a Zeus. The MSI at 5.2 gigahertz draws noticeably less power than gigabyte. No matter how we look at things, gigabyte is using more power than the competition. Power draw is important, but temperatures are more important. And just look at these CPU temperatures. The gigabyte is suffering slightly. When we look at VRM temperatures, it's a very similar picture. Despite the high quality hardware, the Gigabyte VRMs are running hot. When I start a review, I try and put all my preconceptions and assumptions to one side. But the fact of the matter is, I assumed the Gigabyte Z490i or Res Ultra was gonna be either good or very good. It's fairly clear the motherboard manufacturers have taken what they've learned from AMD X470 and then AMD X570 and transferred it across to Intel Z490. The VRMs on modern Intel boards are head and shoulders above the previous generation. And the same is true of Gigabyte. Gigabyte with AMD X470 and X570, they led the way as far as I'm concerned. They went to extremes to put some really solid VRMs on AMD and it seems they've done the same with Intel Z490. The VRMs on this motherboard look 
top notch. So the previous six minutes of video was supposed to be, oh, look at these temperatures, they're really good. That's because of the excellent VRMs. And as you've seen, it didn't quite turn out that way. Actually, those six minutes have been edited down from much more video done over a horribly long period of time because I couldn't quite get to grips with what I was seeing. I'm not jumping up and down about the VRM temperatures. It's fairly obvious if you take a 120 mil fan and put it above the motherboard in your case, which would be about here, or put it at the rear of the case there, you're gonna get, or indeed at the back and the top, you're gonna get a fair amount of air flowing over the VRM heat sinks, which are just here. Simply installing a 120 fan on the open test bench drops the VRM temperatures by 20 degrees. So these temperatures are not horrendous. They're not gonna cause your board to shut down or anything like that, but they're just higher than I expected them to be. While we've been looking at the power draw of this motherboard and the consequent CPU temperatures and VRM temperatures, you've had a decent look at the BIOS so you can see what Gigabyte is up to. It all looks familiar, it all looks easy to work with and we like it. The fact of the matter is I get the feeling in the back of my mind that the BIOS writers at Gigabyte aren't familiar with this particular hardware and they need to work on the BIOS. I think if they tweak it a little bit, it's going to improve power draw by enough to make a difference. I've tried manually dropping vCore by sort of 0 0.5 and 0.1. It didn't work well, which is why I haven't shown it on screen because that was me attempting to, in inverted commas, fix the BIOS. There's more to it than simply raising or lowering vCore. The aggravating thing is I had intended to talk about power draw VRM temp CPU temp for about a minute, show you the bias and overclocking for another minute or two, uh, talk about performance, which obviously if the process is running at 5.2 gigahertz all cores or even 5.1 all cores is perfectly decent. And then we'd all be happy and we'd move on to something more interesting. I had intended to show you some Aorus memory running at 4400 megahertz to see whether or not that makes a significant difference. And while I've done some preliminary testing with that fast memory, I haven't got enough facts and figures to give you the definitive answer. So that's gonna have to be in another video. Also, RGB. What's not to like about RGB? To wrap this up, you won't be the least bit surprised to hear that I have mixed feelings about the Z490i Aorus Ultra. The layout is perfectly decent. Cramming this many features into an ITX form factor is difficult. These breakout cables for the fans and the USB 2 make perfect sense. Overall, that side of things I'm happy about. The I.O. panel, also good. Things like RGB headers and such like, yep, you've even got RGB on the edge of the board here. So all that side of things is perfectly fine. The pricing at 265 pounds in the UK, Z490 is expensive, ITX is expensive. I would actually expect this to be slightly more than 265. Obviously, I'm glad it's not. No complaints about the pricing. What would I change? Well, possibly this logo block over the M.2 slot, because that seems to me superfluous. But apart from that, it's absolutely fine. It's got everything that I want in an ITX board. It's clearly aimed at the performance market. So it's for a small high power PC rather than HTPC, uh, of, or a little PC that's gonna sit beside your TV for gaming, i.e. it's to compete against the next gen consoles. That all makes perfect sense. The question of whether to buy it or not, it comes back to the behavior and the bias. Rather than auto, it's all right. The temperatures are a tad higher than I might like, but they're not a problem. But once you start overclocking, it's a slightly different story. And I'm quite sure it just requires a bias update from Gigabyte and it'll be absolutely fine. So right now the jury is out. It's looking good, but it's not a slam dunk for Gigabyte. Close, but right now, no cigar. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, subscribe, head over to kickguru.net to read our news and reviews. I'm Neil Wood for KitGuru. This is the Gigabyte Z490i Aorus Ultra.